So we are going to discuss water absorbing mediums and the two most popular products are towel and gamcha. Gamcha is some of you may not be knowing what gamcha exactly it. This is generally used in the rural sector and the purpose is same like towel that is we want to wipe our body after we take bath. So the products are similar in nature. Let us look at the design aspects of these products. Now what are the requirements in towel or gamcha? Requirements are first and foremost is the functional aspects where absorbency, softness, the bulkiness, non-linting nature and if possible antibacterial property are important. The next one is ergonomics where what matters is weight. If it is too heavy a towel is given to you or too large size not appropriate to the size of a person then it really affects the utility value of the article or the product. So weight, bulkiness, size these things will come under ergonomics. The next one is durability that is everybody wants a product to be durable there are certain expectation about the life of a product and the durability depends upon in this case color fastness. The propensity of lean generation especially for towel then the strength of the pile the pile should not get pulled out easily from the towel. So these are durability aspects color fastness means color fastness against sunlight, color fastness against washing, against rubbing all becomes important. The other aspect is maintainability, how easy it is to maintain, where whether it is machine wash or not, machine washable or not is important. In most of the uh, urban household the washing machines are there and we are becoming more and more dependent on washing machines. So whether it is machine to be washed or is it possible to wash it by the machine or not that becomes important. The other thing is the quick dry whether I can get it dried stayed very fast or not that also becomes important especially in the season when it is a lot of rains are there, humidity is very high and generally we have found that the towels or the gamcha both are uh, they do not get dried so fast. So quick dry is sometimes becomes very very important. The other aspect is aesthetics that is how beautiful the overall look of the product is where the color part and the aesthetic design part plays an important role. That is why we have gamcha or towels of different colors of different designs, design of the border, design of the other aspects of the towel. So these five are most important requirements in a towel or angocha. Next comes the properties of the fiber or the yarn or fabric and the finishing treatments that we give to a product and its relationship with the requirements that we have listed. And the very first one is absorbency. So if we look at the absorbency aspects and we have listed certain fiber properties, then yarn properties, fabric and chemical finishing treatments. 
and wherever you find a tick means these are the important property of the fiber or yarn or fabric which are relevant to absorbency. So, that in case we find that we need to increase absorbency, then we will know that these are the various parameters which are relevant to absorbency about therefore, they can be changed if possible in order to meet the requirement of absorbency. So, if we look at the what fiber parameters fiber properties are relevant, the first thing that comes as is you look at the tick moisture absorption. Moisture absorption will be important for absorbency point of view. Bending rigidity is important why you may wonder why because bending rigidity of the fibers will decide how tightly the fibers can be packed into the form of a yarn. And if we have lot of pores within the yarn, it will be able to absorb lot of moisture, lot of water. That is why it is relevant. It is otherwise relevant also in some other respect from softness point of view also it will be important. We will see that fineness is also important, the total surface area of the fiber which is available. Then length can also is fineness and length combined will be important because fineness and length and combined decide how much twist will keep in a yarn. And if the fine fibers are long and fine, we can keep less twist and get sufficient strength. And therefore, with the lesser twist, the pores within the yarn will be more and absorbency is going to increase. Cross sectional shape of the fibers will be important also. The more irregular the cross section is, the more porous will be the structure of the yarn. Crimp is also important, but strength and weight strength these are not really important from absorbency point of view. In the case of yarn whether it is a spun yarn or filament yarn that will matter and the type of yarn also might matter whether it is single yarn or it is a plied yarn. Plied yarn we will see that they are generally softer and they are also depending upon the level of twist that we have in single and ply, we can also can make the yarn more porous. Then the twist is obviously very, very important parameter. Then bulkiness of the yarn overall, though bulkiness in turn will affected will be affected by twist as well as the type of fiber and cross sectional of the fibers that we use. From fabric point of view, bulkiness, GSM, the type of fabric that is whether it is knitted, woven, is it pile or non woven. See, there are various forms which are available in the case of fabric. So, we can have woven form, knitted form, pile, and non woven form, all are different types of form. And if we generally see the absorbency, the absorbency will also depend upon the form. Because some will be more porous than the other and therefore, the total amount of liquid that can be absorbed will be also be dependent on the form of the fabric. Chemical finishing treatments may not have much effect on the absorbency, especially if we use hydrophilic fibers. Similarly, if we go to the next softness we have listed, if you look at the softness obviously, a towel or, or gamcha which comes into this contact with the skin needs to be very, very soft because once we take bath the skin becomes very, very soft also. And therefore, on a soft skin, if we try to rub something, then there is a chance of abrasive damage to the skin. And therefore, what we need is a very, very soft fabrics. So, 
anything any fabric that comes into contact with the skin needs to be soft also and in the case of towel or gamcha it has to be very very soft and there what matters is the bending rigidity of the fibers the fineness of the fiber the cross sectional shape of fiber the crimpy nature of the fiber if there are more crimps the bulk thickness will be more and it will be more soft it also depends upon yarn twist yarn bulkiness fabric bulkiness so some properties are listed here and if we whether we are giving any softening treatments to the fabric or not that is also can also have some effect so similarly what we have done in this case one by one we have listed the product properties and the corresponding relevant property of the fiber yarn fabric and finishing treatments which are relevant to it so such kind of you no know, a, a table will be very very handy for any for any designer if he has this table with him and then it will be very quick decision making will be possible when the product is not going to meet certain requirements okay from there we go to the next slide material selection now here there is a list of material that is fiber and the properties of these fibers are also listed now it comes to material selection the selection criteria should be what it will depend whatever is the requirement that we have for the product so in this case capability to absorb moisture is the most important requirement that whatever we choose these fibers must be able to absorb moisture then come the weight strength because once the product is wet then what matters is what is the strength of it keeping in mind the durability of the product next comes the fiber should be soft in feel some fibers are not necessarily all fibers are very soft some fibers are there which are quite hard and therefore we should avoid them the other thing may be important which is nowadays is biodegradability so if we say these are my criteria then and we have a prospective list of fibers then we can choose that which fiber we should use for such a product and if we look at the list we can see we have given the tenacity values of certain fibers we have deliberately listed some fibers which are no not uh, uh, which are synthetic fibers and there are cotton natural fibers wool there are man made fibers viscose model lysol then we have synthetic fibers polyamide that is nylon polyester and polypropylene and if we look at these properties what we see here is that see some fibers like moisture absorption point of view polypropylene does not absorb any moisture so polypropylene cannot be used polyester also absorbs so little moisture polyamide also absorb not much so these fibers are not suitable for a towel or gamcha what is suitable here you see some of the fibers which have got good moisture absorption there cotton wool viscose rayon model lysol all of them in a way may be suitable for a product like this now the selection criteria also depends upon the cost finally other than the properties so here we are just considering the properties so moisture regain wise they are all suitable but you see the viscose rayon though it absorbed very high amount of moisture 12.5% but it weight strength is very very low 
West End reduces by 40 to 70 percent. So, the rayon otherwise is a fiber which can absorb a lot of moisture, but still it is not preferred because it becomes very weak. The strain may go down by 50 percent and therefore, durability of the product and the shape and size of the products generally after use may be a problem and hence that is avoided. Modal loyal can be used, but they are basically very costly fiber because as I said finally, cost will also come into the picture. Pool very good moisture again, but still we do not use it. First of all wool is very costly, second thing wool is has scales and therefore, in a wet skin the wool is going to rub the skin. So, that could be some abrasive damage also. Besides the surface is rough and it is very very costly. So, generally we will not prefer wool and coarse wool cannot be used. We need wool which is very fine and fine wools are extremely costly and they also there is another problem to wool wools are like the once we wash it suppose be made of wool there is a chance of interlocking between the fibers. The wools are prone to felting and therefore, even though it has very high moisture absorption it is not used. The other thing we have to remember that wool surface is not really absorb moisture, wool can absorb water it is hydrophobic in nature, whether the wool can absorb moisture vapor, but if we put a drop of water on wool you will find that the wool the water is not spreading on wool fiber surface. It is simply rolling because the surface of the wool because of the having scales that which are there it is not going to absorb liquid drops so easily, but moisture vapor it can absorb. So, these are some of the reasons why the wool does not find its place into a into absorbency products. Right about therefore, we can say cotton and viscose rayon are very very suitable, but viscose rayon has its own problem with weight strength. So, cotton is the fiber which is mostly used for making towel or angocha. Property combinations are unique, cost wise it is also affordable by most of the people. So, generally use these two and sometimes we mix with some other fibers in order to enhance some of its characteristics though we know the cost will go up, but obviously there is a market where a slight rise in cost is not going to really make a difference. Now, let us look at, at water absorbency theory also since because this product is going to absorb ionic liquid especially water. Now, water is absorbed within the fibers through diffusion. So, some percentage of water goes inside the fiber and they occupy spaces between the molecules in the amorphous region. So, that is something which is going to happen. Then interstitial pores between the fibers also is a place where water will be accumulating and they will be held there by capillary forces. That means, between yarns or within yarns between fibers wherever the interstitial space are there water finds a place there and how does it reach there is because of capillary force. The other thing is the void spaces available for holding water is equal to the pore volume. So, how much water is going to and some water will be also be held because of the bond that forms between the fiber and the water molecules. So, these are the some important factors that we have to keep in mind. That means, the most important fact is the void space. The amount of 
water that goes inside the fiber through diffusion is comparatively much, much less in comparison to the void space that is available either between fibers within a yarn or maybe between yarns in a fabric. So, we have to keep in mind that void space is the source where the water can find this place. Now, let us look at this now. Suppose, we have a rectangular assembly of fibers as shown in the diagram. Now, if an assembly of fibers is rectangular sheet, we can think of how much white space is available here. Let the area of the fabric be A, thickness of the fabric is T and W is the mass of the dry fabric and rho F is the density of fiber. In that case, the volume of the fabric is going to be A cross T and therefore, specific volume of the fabric is going to be what? it is volume per unit weight. So, V by W that is A T by W and specific volume of fiber is how much that is going to be 1 upon rho F, where rho F is the density of fiber. Okay. So, volume occupied by fibers is weight of fibers by fiber density. So, in the same sheet or this assembly, this is the volume of fibers which are there and so how much pore volume is existing pore volume is volume of the structure minus the volume of fiber so it will be at minus w by rho f and that's what that gives you the pore volume within it so pore volume per unit mass if we try to find out c which is going to be therefore, A t minus w by rho f by w. So, that will be the weight of fibers in it. That means, the water that will be absorbed depends upon how much space is available between the fibers. If the if it is a sheet made up only fiber, like, like a non-open sheet, let us consider it to be. And that is going to be the specific volume of fabric minus specific volume of fiber ultimately. Because A T by W is in a way specific volume of fabric and W rho f by rho f divided by W, if you do it, it will be 1 upon rho f, which will be specific volume of fiber. So, difference between these two is going to be the proportion of pore volume available per unit mass. Okay. From there, if we think that we have a rect instead of rectangular, we have a circular array of fibers like suppose yarn. Yarn can be considered to be a cylindrical in nature. So, we have a cylinder and there are many fibers within it. Then what is the volume of the cylinder? We can work it out very simple terms and similarly we can find out what is the specific volume and then specific volume of fiber 1 upon rho f and therefore, this value of c is going to be specific volume of fabric minus specific volume of fiber as we have done previously and that gives you this formula pi d square l by 4 w minus 1 upon rho f. So, this is how we can expect how much. So, for a given fiber rho f is constant. So, what matters is therefore, in this case what is the diameter of the suppose in this case if it is yarn if we consider it to be then what is the diameter of the yarn the more the diameter the more porous it will be a small change in diameter will increase the value of c 
disproportionately because here it comes d comes at the and in square and also what matters is the length how much length is there that will also affect the value of c what length of yarn we choose at what length of yarn we can accommodate in a given area that will actually matter anyway so this is the two basics of uh, a uh, formula related to absorbency therefore absorbency capacity can be written as c as at by w minus 1 upon rho f where a is the area and t is the thickness considering a rectangular sheet which basically means pore volume per unit weight and the other term vd by w is the fluid diffuse into the fiber how much fluid can penetrate the fiber and reside within the fiber through diffusion process these two are important but as i have said the second term is actually negligible in comparison to the first term so for all practical purpose what is important for us for absorbing capacity is the very first term in this particular equation now absorbency capacity of a cotton yarn any bathing sheet towel or gamsa can be considered to be an assembly of yarns ultimately see in the gamsa it is a two dimensional sheet consisting of yarns in the warp and weft directions which is sheet in the case of towel it is basically it is not two dimensional it is basically two and half dimension because we have the piles so but ultimately it is all made of finally yarns so yarns are getting accommodated within a certain area and because we want to accommodate more yarn per unit area therefore the form of the fabric has changed from a two dimensional sheet to a basically two and half dimensional or almost three dimensional sheet in the form of towel the idea is that we want to accommodate more and more yarn per unit area and how do i achieve it we have to go to the third dimensions and therefore we create piles so that we have more yarns per unit area other than the warp and weft anyway so let phi be the packing coefficient which is basically means yarn density by fiber density so phi is generally 0.5 it has been stated that it usually varies in spun yarn between 0.4 to 0.6 so this is the design research is one is supposed to do when he is going to design something because we need to know typically what is the packing coefficient of spun yarns we are assuming that we are using spun yarns here so if we look back the various you know research articles or textbooks will find the spun yarns in the case of cotton for normal twist usually varies between 0.4 to 0.6 in this range so we choose a value in between them let us say 0.5 we choose it now fiber density we have chosen it to be let us say fiber is cotton therefore it is 1.5 and hence yarn density we can find out we can multiply it fiber density by the packing coefficient and we get what is the yarn density from there the reported value about the water that is that diffuses within the fiber as we reported to be 30 to 40% so this is also taken from some research articles how much water can really go inside the cotton fiber so that information we have to dig out and then we can write if we take into account that then we can find out what is the absorbent capacity of cotton yarn 
per gram of yarn. So, C value we can work it out 1 upon rho of yarn, specific volume of yarn minus specific volume of fiber plus the amount that diffuses and that amount we have considered to be let us say 0 0.3 in this case. We can choose any value 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 and if we do this we get a figure ultimately 0 0.96 centimeter cube per gram which is close to 1 gram per gram. That means, a cotton yarn typically will absorb water how much 1 gram per gram that is 1 gram of cotton yarn will absorb 1 gram of water. That means, 100 percent of its own weight it will be able to absorb cotton yarn of normal twist not very high twisted cotton yarn with a twist multiplied of 6 or 7 or 8 not that. Normally, we use cotton yarns for normal such uses it is around 4, 4.2, 3.8, 3.9 in this range. So, for these yarn this will be valid. So, if we go the design analysis of the angocha now or gamcha which is basically a thin towel we need to know how much water needs to be absorbed after taking bath. What should be the size of a absorbing sheet to cover the body? So, that because that is connected to the size of the sheet that is in this case the gamcha that we are going to make it. Typically, the water to be absorbed after bathing is 80 gram this information also we need to find out if the information is available from some source we use that to make initial estimations. If it is not available then we have to do some research to find out really how much water needs to be absorbed from the skin once a person takes a bath. So, if 80 gram of water let us say we need to absorb then required minimum weight of the gamcha is going to be how much 80 divided by 0 0.96. If we choose the exact value 0 0.96 we have found out earlier 0 0.96 gram per gram it is close to therefore, 83.3 that is 84 gram that means basically to absorb 80 gram of water from the skin we need a sheet if it is made of cotton which, which should be which should have 84 gram of yarn. Now, obviously a gamcha if you take the weight it is more than this. So, therefore, the question may come that we are arriving at a figure which is not practical because let us now see ki why it is not practical because this 80 gram that we have chosen maybe for some people it is an average value you know so some people it may go up to 100 gram the person is tall and very you no know, thick person at the same time it will be less if it is a child so the requirement of absorption of water may vary a lot depending upon the size of the person. For adults, for typical letters it is 80 gram, but if, if somebody is too tall and also very fat, obviously the requirement will go from 80 gram to maybe 100 gram or for somebody who is thin it will come down to 60 gram. So, there is always a range and the designer has to keep in mind to satisfy majority of the people because once he produce some things and brings it to the market he does not know who is his customer. But anybody any customer who wants to buy something he wants to make sure that it is useful for him. So, therefore, for a typical person of standard height and standard health 80 gram may be ok. So, based on 80 gram we are trying to calculate and see where do we arrive. Now, second thing is that when a gamcha is used to absorb the water from the skin 
not necessarily the entire sheet is, is going to absorb the water because the portion that comes into contact with the skin will only absorb. So, some part of the gamcha will remain dry and some part will remain wet. So, let us say assume that either 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 percent of the sheet is used to actual absorption water, the rest of the area will not be used. That is what will be a practical situation it will look like this. And therefore, what we have done here that assuming that this much percentage of sheet is going to be used, how much is the requirement of cotton that we need. And based on the area of a, a gamcha, we can find out what should be the GSM of the fabric. That is what the calculation has been done here. Now, what we have done it here, one is here is a chart on the right hand side which shows people of different sizes and typical size of gamcha commercially which is available in the market which was taken out from the nowadays it is has become easy because you can go to either Amazon or Flipkart and then find out what are the specifications. But sometimes the specification may be wrong also, but typical sizes as has been quoted by them is something like this. So, there are different sizes because some people may be tall and as I said fat they need a longer size sheet, someone needs a shorter sheet. If it is a child we need a small one. Typically we have seen that the size of gamcha could be 0 0.70 meter to 1.40 meter, so 0.98 meter square area or sometimes little larger size are also there. So, these are the different sizes which are typically available and we have chosen a size which is 1.12 meter square. Now, the cotton yarn assuming that if it is 30 percent is used of the sheet, the cotton yarn that we require is actually 280 gram. That means, the total weight has to be 280 gram of the gamcha and that basically means the GSM of the gamcha is going to be 280 divided by 1.12 that is the area, it is going to be 250 will be the GSM of the fabric. So, assuming 30 percent sheet is used or 40 percent or 50 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent, the corresponding GSMs are shown here in the last column and the yarn weight requirement also are shown. So, we get a fair idea now that what should be the you know the typical GSM or the fabrics that we have to produce for making a gamcha. So, this is how we can see and then we go to towel, towel it is different because the form of the fabric is different. So, let us we have seen that there are many types of towel typically available in the market some are very heavy towel, 550 gram per meter square weight, some are heavy and some are medium weight, some are light weight. So, these are the four varieties of towel which are available. As you have seen in the case of gamcha that means, even though gamcha is containing yarn which is much more than you require actually, because we know that the, the way we use this sheet to wipe our body, part of the sheet will remain always dry. So, that has to be accounted while we are considering the weight of yarn that we require and if that much of yarn has to be distributed over so much area, so what should be the GSM of the fabric. Now, when it comes to towel commercial towels some data are given here that we also have towels light weight, medium weight, heavy because people's you know, preferences changes. Some people like heavy towels, someone likes medium weight, someone like light weight. If an old person wants to use towel, he prefers a light weight towel. 
he doesn't want a very heavy towel a old man because his strength has gone down similarly a child needs a light weight towel to handle but an adult will prefer maybe medium weight heavy weight or someone can also go for very heavy towel which is too bulky it will be and some people may prefer it so now construction details are also given here through some you no know, uh, design kind of research we need to do always just to know commercially what is going on so like weft yarn typically carded yarns are used the counts are 16 by 16 by 2 that means 16 counts yarn two of them are plied together and used in towel or 20 so many turns per meter web density are given web density in the border are also given warp yarns typically carded yarn rotor yarn pc yarn all types of yarns could be used and warp densities are also given the pile yarns generally are to be ring or rotor people are also trying to use rotor yarn nowadays and typical counts are all given these are from the pile warp length per 10 cm so some data is are basically given these are constructional data related to count of yarn in warp weft as well as pile and the kind of twist which is there some data is are given here now it has been seen that the pile warp is 65 to 85 to 80% of total weight of a towel so towel has a specific form we have warp and weft and we have pile both on the both sides of the fabric and the pile yarns their wet contribution is typically 65 to 80% so normally it is 70% the weft yarn is wet contribution is 9 to 15% normally we consider to be 15% and ground warp yarn 10 to 20% there is a normally it is 15% so that means these are the typical constructional details data and they are relevant the the contribution of the three types of yarns which go into making the fabric now design analysis if we say towel accommodates more yarn per unit area than traditional gamcha and also gives a very soft feel because the piles can get deformed very easily with little force they will deform so people will feel it to be very very soft in nature because piles are there and whenever it comes in contact with the skin we press it actually we are deforming the piles which are easily deformable typical weight of a bath towel is around 480 grams now weight of water we human body after bath is 80 gram so how do we feel that a bath towel is over designed whereas i need to only use 80 g of water that would needs 80 g of cotton yarn but typical towel weight can go up to 480 g it can be little less also could be more but definitely it is much more than 80 g so absorbed water is 80 by 480 into 116.66 17% of total weight but we have seen earlier that the cotton yarn can typically absorb 1 gram per gram therefore the question that come is the towel over designed or not so sometimes we under design certain products we need to go for design analysis and whether we are over designing certain products or not now if we for that go for this analysis so water to be absorbed after bathing is 80 g required minimum weight of yarn in a towel therefore is going to be 
80 by 0.96 earlier also we have seen it is 84 gram to be very very exact. In a towel the pile yarn mainly absorbs water because that comes into contact with the skin as they project out from the towel body. So, assuming the pile yarn to be 70 percent of the total weight, the weight of pile yarn should be how much? 83.3 divided by 0 0.7 that is 109 gram. So, that should be the weight of pile yarn. From there, total weight of towel therefore, is going to be 119 into 100 by 70 that is 170 gram. So, actual weight of towel should be around 170 gram. But actual weight what we see is much much more than 170 gram. So, this 480 gram we have seen. So, therefore, the question comes ki is it properly designed or not? Well, the same argument will come now. Well, in use, the entire area of a towel does not absorb water because only all of you can make this experiment yourself. After taking bath, if you wipe out your body and then check, you, you will find that there are patches of wet mark on the towel. That means only some part of the towel has absorbed water, the rest of the part has not come into contact with the skin at all. So, this is always there. The fractional towel area actually absorb water from our bodies around 25 to 30 percent. This also can be done through some research. Ki really, how much area of the towel is exposed to water when we are trying to wipe the body. So, assuming 30 percent of the total area used for absorption, the weight of pile yarn should be at least 109 divided by 0 0.3 that is 396.6 gram because rest of the pile yarn will remain unutilized. So, its waste is coming to be 396.6 gram only pile yarn. So, weight of ground yarn because piles have to be held together by the interlacement of warp and weft. So, total weight of ground warp and weft which is also 15 and 15 30 percent is going to be 170 gram 169.9 actually close to 170. So, pile yarn 396.6. So, total weight the towel is going to be 566.5 gram. If we see whatever assumptions we have made, if they remain valid then the weight of towel is going to be 566 gram and you will find that if we go back and see we will find that there are towels which are very heavy and if we let us look go back to the original slide with the what we have written about the thickness the weight 550 gram and more heavy towel are also available. So, as our assumptions which we have made is giving you a figure close to 550. So, therefore, if we play with the assumptions, if we can go for medium weight towels or light weight towels also, depending upon how much area of the towel suppose has been used for absorbing water. We assume 30 percent area. If we go for 40 percent area, the value will go down. If we think go for 50 percent area, the value will still go down. Then we can find out depending upon the size, the size requirement depends upon as I said size of the human body. And generally the size of a gents towel is little smaller in comparison to a ladies towel. So, the area covered or the size depends on the size of a person and so much weight you require. So, if you distribute the same weight on a larger surface area, your GSM value will go down. Typical we have seen earlier it is 1.12 we assume to be a uh, no, the area of a angocha 
and similar area will be also be there for the towel sometimes slightly more sometimes slightly less because we can have then towels are also classified with different categories there are beach towels there is hand towel that is you know also towels used for bathing towel so varieties of towels of different sizes are also there for different purposes anyway so we have given a you know a, a way to analyze also the certain designs which are already there and try to understand the design from the by doing a very logical analysis that whether it has been over designed or not from the point of view that how much water we require to absorb and how much weight of fiber which is there in a towel definitely it is much more than what we need but it is required because we need to also completely cover our body it should have such a sufficient length and your width as well at the same time the entire area may not be used for wiping so with this we close this discussion on absorbing medium we stop it here and thank you Thank <music> you.